listening to the Civil Solidarity Network. And I'm going to show presented by Martin Center of Civil Solidarity and sponsored by Mass Therapeutics. We're coming to you live from Indianapolis, Indiana, and we're here to serve you by providing up-to-date information and opinion on all matters pertaining to sickle cell disease. My name is Gary A. Gibson, and I am your host for the next two hours. Let me start by saying that I don't have sickle cell disease, nor do I carry the sickle cell trait. In spite of that, I am no stranger to sickle cell. Quite the contrary. You see, even though I don't have sickle cell, it has had a very huge impact on my life. That's true because its complications took my wife from me after 12 years of marriage. It also caused her to have a miscarriage that resulted in the loss of our twin babies that she was carrying while in a sickle cell crisis. So all told, a sickle cell has taken three lives from me and I feel the pain of those losses every single day. I currently serve as the President and CEO of Martin Center Sickle Cell Initiative, a community-based organization that has been serving people with sickle cell for over 45 years. Each day, I attempt to transform the pain of my losses into positive energy, energy that is focused on making a difference for those who are battling sickle cell. From being involved with sickle cell for over 40 years, I'm able to say that much progress has been made, but there is still so much work to do. This show is an opportunity to contribute to the ever-expanding dialogue about sickle cell that is taking place all around the world. Our show is about raising awareness, but it is also about so much more. I like to say that sickle cell awareness is important, but we need more than awareness. Those living with sickle cell are already aware. That makes me ask, so what are we doing for them? And my answer is, not enough. That's why we've named this show the Sickle Cell Action Network, because awareness without action has very little impact. We want this show to be a source of information and a call to action to help those who must live with sickle cell in their midst. We have designed the show to provide information that is beneficial to patients, caregivers, family members, and friends alike. Most importantly, we want people with sickle cell to know and understand that they are not alone. The Sickle Cell Action Network show features live guests who are health care providers, patients, advocates, and others who are engaged in the fight to eradicate sickle cell and ease its burden on those it affects. Today, we're pleased to have a special guest who will speak with us about fighting to excel with sickle cell in the picture. Joining me today in studio is Samuel Denzel Standard, a young man in his early 20s, and we're very happy to have Samuel here with us today. Before we get to today's topic, however, I want to share some of our upcoming topics with you so that you'll know what we're going to be doing. In future weeks, we will cover such topics as fighting sickle cell on two continents, and that will be next week, sickle cell's narcotics dilemma, traveling with sickle cell, and many, many others. So as you can see, we are serious about sharing valuable information, and we hope that you will join us every week, same time, same station. If you've missed some of our previous editions or wish that you could listen to them again, don't worry. Just go to the Martin Center Sickle Cell Initiative YouTube page and you'll find them there. Now let's get on with our show and we'll start with this week's edition of Sickle Cell News Update. As always, we uh, scan the internet and other sources looking for news to share with you um, and anything that relates to sickle cell that we think has uh, has merit uh, we, we try to share that kind of information with you and there's a couple of stories that we have here uh, one is from uh, a friend of ours um, has actually um, come and participated in a Martin Center sickle cell initiative uh, annual sickle cell conference a few years ago and, and I'm speaking of uh, none other than Professor Kweku Ohene Frempong who is actually renowned as one of the world's experts on sickle cell disease and this particular article um, is titled Apathy of Government a Reason for High Record of Disease it's coming to us from Ghana uh, the pulse.com and the article reads the absence of funding and commitment on the part of government have been cited as one of the contributory factors to the increasing cases of sickle cell disease in Ghana it is estimated that about a quarter of Ghanaians live with the condition unknowingly According to the Sickle Cell Foundation of Ghana, government has shown no efforts in helping to manage the condition, especially amongst children. President of the Sickle Cell Foundation, P Professor Kweku Ohene Frimpong, has revealed that an intervention to screen newborn babies has become stagnant over the last decade due to lack of funds. It is a disease that we know in sub-Saharan Africa half of the children born with the disease, at least half die by five years of age. But because we don't collect data in our countries about this disease, we don't even monitor the impact that it is having on public health. Here, any time a child dies suddenly from malaria, we say it's from malaria. But sickle cell children die from infections much more than they die from malaria, said Dr. Frimpong. 
the pediatric hematologist at the Pennsylvania University appealed to the government to put measures in place to control the disease. So government should have the policy of how to manage the disease. What are we going to do about the disease? The newborn screening that we started here in Ghana before any other country in Africa, we have become stagnant. For almost the last 10 years, we have not increased the number of children we test a year, he said. Testing goes on only in Kumasi area, the same places that we started the research back in 1995. We have not spread anywhere because the government has not given us the money to do the screening, he appealed. Speaking on a Kamasi-based Ultimate Radio show, Professor Ohene Frempong indicated that the foundation now solic solicits for funds from corporate institutions. Dr. Frempong is a tremendous individual doing tremendous work, um, not only in Africa, but here at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia here in the United States. Uh, the next uh, story is um, a, I like to see these and so I share them when I see people with uh, celebrity status doing things for sickle cell. This one is concerning uh, San Diego Chargers linebacker Jerry Ata Ataochu. Um, and the headline is linebackers, uh, char excuse me, Chargers linebacker Jerry Ataochu heads home to organize blood drive. Ataochu's sister suffers from sickle cell disease is the subtitle. And the article reads, the San Diego Chargers are less than two weeks away from reporting for training camp. Many of the players take the time leading up to training camp to relax or head home to spend with their families. Chargers linebacker Jerry Adachu made a very special trip home to Washington, D.C. Adachu organized a blood drive in his hometown of D.C. on Tuesday to help children and adults with sickle cell disease. His sister, Glory, suffers from sickle cell disease and is currently hospitalized, undergoing a transfusion. She would have been here, but she had a crisis, says Arachu. So with as many blood transfusions she had, I feel like it's my duty, using my platform, to get people out. Arachu started the Glory's Hope F Sickle Cell Foundation to help raise awareness. Sickle cell disease affects approximately one out of 365 blacks or African Americans across the United States. Ada Achu is expected to return to San Diego ahead of Chargers training camp. In 2015 season, he finished sixth in total tackles for the Chargers and was ranked second in quarterback hits, sacks, and tackles for loss. The San Diego Chargers are set to report for training camp on July 29th. Good to see that another um, sports celebrity is doing something for sickle cell and that puts him in along with other people that we have talked about in recent times and every time we see a story like that we'll try to share that with you we want to try to encourage others that are involved on in that kind of uh, work that kind of uh, celebrity status to do more for sickle cell here's an interesting story that i'd like to share with you as well this one is from fox 13 news in bremberton washington and the article reads Kenneth Patterson and Tony Mazga were in the car Saturday morning when they saw flames shooting out of an apartment building on Wyckoff Avenue. The heat from the fire was so intense, glass was breaking and smoke was everywhere. I just jumped out of the car without the crutches and I went hobbling. I went hobbling over here, said Patterson. He has sickle cell disease and needs hip surgery. He's not even supposed to be on his feet right now, but that didn't stop him. The two of them each took a floor. He ran, in, he ran in, I went in, and we just tried to get everyone out, said Masca. Bremberton police say Patterson even carried a child out in his arms with the family behind him. I saw a wave of flames coming from an upper story on the balcony that just rolled right on down, and actually I lost sight of him in the smoke and the heat, said Sergeant Kelly Mead. The two of them each took a floor. He ran in, and we just tried to get everyone out. Bremberton police say Patterson... Um, well, that's a repeat. Said he saw a wave of flames coming from an upper story, and he lost sight of him in the smoke and the heat. Um, they actually ended up rescuing people from this fire in Bremerton, Washington, and Mr. Kenneth Patterson, a sickle cell patient, is now being seen as a hero in the area. That is the last of our stories, and I also want to provide one more reminder that a week uh, from the next, let's see, today's the 19th, so on the 28th through the 31st in Los Angeles, California, it will be the 2016 Annual Sickle Cell Patient and Family Educational Symposium in Los Angeles. 
This convention is the only conference in the sickle cell community that is solely focused on people living with sickle cell disease, their loved ones, caregivers, advocates, and caring health professionals. The conference will have programs that focus on the entire lifespan of those with sickle cell disease, encouraging you to live, survive, and thrive. The convention website says that sickle cell warriors are not victims to be pitied. We are warriors who collectively are in a fight for our very lives. Only someone who deals with sickle cell disease can understand what you are going through. So come join us, be celebrated, educated, and empowered. Yours truly will be giving the keynote speech at the awards banquet on July 30th. I'm very excited about it, and I'm looking forward to seeing everyone there. To learn more about this convention, visit www.sicklecellconvention.com. Thank you to Tosin Ola Wiesman and Dr. Lakia Bailey, the people that are spearheading this convention. This is the Sickle Cell Action News uh, update, and we are now going to take a break. And when we return, we will start our conversation with Mr. Samuel Standard. Welcome back to the Sickle Cell Action Network. I'm Gary A. Gibson, your host, and the Sickle Cell Action Network is brought to you as a service of Martin Center Sickle Cell Initiative, and it is sponsored by Mass Therapeutics. Today we're speaking with a young man named Samuel Denzel Standard, um, and I'm very happy that, that Samuel's here with us today, and he's going to give us a slightly different perspective over the ones that you've heard over all of our shows in the past. Um, and I just really, first of all, want to say to Samuel, Samuel, thank you for coming and being here with us. Oh, you're welcome, sir. Um, you're such a polite man, and you're, you're, you people out there are going to hear this as we go on. He's extremely polite. Um, Samuel, please tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, where were you born? How old are you? What type of sickle cell do you have? Anything like that. We do that so the people that are listening can get a sense for who they're listening to. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so I was born here in Indianapolis. I grew up partially in Orlando, Florida. Orlando? Yes. Okay. Orlando, Florida, uh, south. <laughs> okay. Of course, in Orlando, it's hot weather now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably hotter than what it is in Indianapolis even today. And I am 23 years old. I just turned 23 years old on May the 15th. Okay. And uh, you, what, what uh, type of what's your hemoglobin type as far as sickle cell is concerned? So my sickle cell type is, you know, I have sickle cell anemia, inheritance disease, uh, delta beta, and the abbreviation is SB. It carries the delta beta, uh, del delcemia has, and, and it has the smaller red blood cells, but more than other people, you can see the difference between other people's red blood cells and a delcemia microscope. Ah, okay. So our show today is about the fight to excel and before we talk about how you do that on a daily basis I want to talk a little bit about how sickle cell has affected you personally um, and, I, and I want to start by asking you how old were you when you were first diagnosed I was diagnosed with the disease when I was born it was it's an inheritance disease sickle cell disease anemia SB delta data the cylinder Okay, so you were you were how old? Seven? Is that what you said? I was well, yes. About that. I mean, when I was when I was born, I mean, I was just. I mean, it's an inheritance disease. So when I was when I was born, definitely. Okay. Um, and so, what was what was it like for you growing up um, with sickle cell? Okay, so growing up with the disease, well. It was really complicated. Everyday living was not easy. I had a, I had several crises when I was one years old and up when I was five years old. That's when I really got to have fun with my parents and got to experience life. Mm -hmm. So, when you do you remember? Maybe not the one when you were one years old. Do you remember your first crisis when you were five years old? My first crisis, well. My first crisis at least happened when I was three years old, and what happened was I had a stroke, and when I had the stroke, I was in critical condition. I had to go to the Methodist, Methodist Emergency Hospital, uh -huh. the ER, uh -huh. and throughout that time period, I was there, and I used to spend a lot of my visits in the hospital. I mean, I, I was, I mean... I wasn't even considered a visitor. I was just hospitalized for sickle cell. Uh -huh. When I was younger, 
sickle cell was an everyday thing for me. Mm -hmm. It was it was just I had to get up, wake up, check in with my doctors. My doctors checked in with me. The nurses did my temperature. They got blood work, the lab work done for the beta uh, sickle cell, the, the silnia, um, globin um, disease. And you know, through that time period, I was, I was, I mean, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. Um. So. Let's go back to that stroke because okay. we've talked um, with other of our guests who who have had that experience, and um, you say it was you were three years old when you had it, and do you remember any of that? Well, what I remember of the stroke, I was okay. So I was I was three at the time. I don't remember much of it. Okay. I do remember having the stroke, and then. The, they am having to rush me and call the ambulance and go into the Methodist ER. That's where I was born in Indianapolis. Okay. In this hospital. Uh -huh. 1992. Okay. May 15, 1992. And at that point of time, I remember just being ho overly hospitalized. And after that, I had to go right back because I had another stroke. And after the second stroke, I did have a splenectomy. A splenectomy. Yeah, okay. A splenectomy. Okay. And during that time, the spleen was being removed so they can keep any additional bacteria right. out of my lungs and out of my, you know, out, out of, of my your system. system. Yeah. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. A lot of patients with sickle cell have their spleens removed. Um, so that puts you in a different group of people that are walking around the planet without spleens. But we'll talk about later on just how special that group of people is. Yes, sir. Um, so. Are you the only one in your family, your immediate family, that has sickle cell, or maybe even your extended family? Okay, well, no, I'm not the only person in my family that has sickle cell. My father, Samuel Standard, senior, my mother, Leah Perkins, and my daughter, Zaina Standard, they have the sickle cell trait. They don't have the actual inheritance disease. Right, right. They, they don't have the sickle cell anemia disease. They just have the trait. And usually if you find two mates with the trait, one that has the trait and usually another that has the trait, uh, the offspring or the child can get the sickle right. cell anemia right. disease. Right. There's a 25% chance for each child that that, that couple has. Yes, it is. <coughs> so, um, okay. So, um, are there any in your extended family that you're aware of that might have sickle cell? actual disease well not in my extended well extended family yes i am cherokee american and i do have uh, my some of my families are from the old country like, uh, europe or sicily mm -hmm. and greece and you know that's where it's derived from that's where the thalassemia comes from right yes sir yeah uh, i have a little bit of cherokee in me as well so we we have something in common <laughs> yes sir that. we do um so do you remember, you sort of touched on it, but do you remember, did you have a lot of sickle cell crises when you were a child? Well, growing up with a sickle cell disease, well, it, it was really complicated. Everyday living was not easy. I had several crises when I was one years old and up. When I was five years old, that was really when I got to have fun with my parents. <clears throat> Excuse me. What do you mean by that? You got to have fun with your parents. Well, when I was five years old, what I mean, I got to have fun. I was finally out the hospital. Okay, okay. so you at three and three and four, I was in the hospital. Okay, five and five up to seven, I was I was in the hospital. It wasn't just as major as three or four. Okay, okay. It was. I mean, it was very a critical time when it was three or four. Okay, five. I got to experience some of my, my my father's love and my mother's love, and during okay. that time period, okay, my father was going to college and he was getting his. Uh, Degree, his bachelor's degree. Okay. And my mother was still in focusing on school as well. But when I got out, uh, you know, I had to. I mean, uh, they got me out of the house, and okay. I was I was active during that time period. My mother had put me. Well, um, so coming up and in, in through high school, my mother put me in the Metropolitan Indianapolis Metropolitan High School. And that was the, the that, that was the Goodwill School, and, and that's the, a charter school. It's uh -huh. a new charter school. 2009, it was a new charter school. And what happened was I played soccer and track, and I was the I was captain of the track team. Really? And okay. I was, you know, you know, I was the number one player in the soccer team. 
and my father had put me into sports when I was five. I was like the youngest in the pile club. Um, through my years, I grew up with both of my parents playing sports, becoming victorious, and then I still I'm still fighting with the sickle cell anemia. Um, I, I taught myself how to cook and eat healthy foods to manage my sickle cell health and wealth. Huh. So a lot of people with sickle cell do not play um, exertional sports like you do or did. Um, do you, how, how were you able to do that? Um, what do you think? Is it because of your healthy eating or, or what? I mean, a lot of people with sickle cell can't, can't play those sports. Yes, a lot of people can't play those sports, and I am really, really blessed. I had to thank, uh, I had to thank God to that I'm, I'm blessed with the with the power of playing those sports because when I was younger, my father and my mother they had really, really took a part in my life, and they had taught me how to handle it well. And you know, through the years, I have handled it well, and. I mean, it's not only just handling it. You have to learn how to just manage yourself. You have to. It's a. It's a responsibility. Mm -hmm. Not more of a task, but it, it is a responsibility. Mm -hmm. And through the years, I had to learn how, what to do, what not to do with the sickle cell disease. Sometimes I can get sick, you know, just from like natural causes through cold weather. Mm -hmm. That's really when it, it, it happens. And not only the cold weather, but I, I had to teach myself how to eat healthy and how to live a healthy lifestyle. I mean, with the sickle cell, you have to live a healthy lifestyle so you can maintain being good and, and you know being being able to be stable through the life through through having sickle cell inheritance as well as playing sports. Sports is just something that I was just naturally good in, and sports it just it came really natural. I was really naturally talented at birth, and especially you know those years when I was sitting in the hospital. That it, the sports had just came, you know, in my direction because okay. I was, I was, they, you know, after the after the hospital, my father got me a little bit more active. You know, uh, for those of you that are listening, you you can't see uh, Samuel, but he does have a very athletic build, so it makes sense that that he was able to play these sports. But again, um, not everybody with sickle cell can do what he's done. Um, but it sounds to me like you push yourself. You've pushed yourself to uh, to excel, which is basically our, our theme for today. Uh, but not only did you do that, you found ways to manage your condition. Yes, sir. Um, and so it's all about management, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back and continue our discussion with uh, Samuel Denzel Standard. And when we do, um, we'll see you on the other side of this break. This is the Sickle Cell Action Network. I'm Gary A. Gibson. Hi, I'm Gary A. Gibson, your host for the Sickle Cell Action Network Internet Radio Show. If you are impacted by sickle cell disease in any way, whether you are a patient, a caregiver, or a friend, you need to join me every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. I promise that you will find our show to be full of information, perspective, and opinion about all things sickle cell. See you Tuesday right here on RadioNext.tv, the cool groove site. Welcome back to the Sickle Cell Action Network. I'm Gary Agibson, your host, and we are speaking with Mr. Samuel Denzel Standard. And uh, Sam, I uh, often ask this question of my guests. Um, what does sickle cell pain feel like to you? How would you describe it? Well, sickle cell pain feels like no other. The first thing that I notice is major cramping in the bones. Even muscle tears. I recently had a tear in my arm due to sickle cell. A tear? Yes, sir. A tear. Okay. A tear in your muscle? Yes. It was a tear. It was a minor tear in my muscle. Okay. Due to restraining my arm. Okay. Uh, from the sickle cell. Like okay. Disease. Sometimes people say it feels like getting hit with a bat from the inside out. <laughs> uh, sometimes people say it feels worse than having a broken arm. Mm. Sometimes well, others. You, yes. I mean, that's to explain it that's exactly how it feels okay sometimes it can it can be a little bit more cri critical than just a tear it can be a you're going through a, a crisis and a crisis what that does is that speeds up your blood cells and through that crisis splitting up your blood cells you really don't have any blood cells to rely on that's why you're really in pain 
because your blood cells are not giving enough oxygen and your blood cells are not doing their jobs. Mm -hmm. And the sickle cells are dying within, let's say, about 5 to 20, within the 20 seconds, more. But the reason, the reason why we can recover a little bit faster and why it would be a shield from malaria is because of our white blood cells. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yes, um, okay, so let's go back a little bit again. We talked a little bit about you spent a lot of time in the hospital as a youngster. Um, and so how much do you remember about the type of medical care that you received as a child? Um, please tell us some about some of the experiences that you might remember. And, and the reason I asked that too is because different areas of the country are better prepared to treat people with sickle cell than others. Different hospitals are better prepared. Different doctors are better prepared. And over the course of uh, the shows that we've had here on the Sickle Cell Action Network, we've interviewed many, many sickle cell patients, and, and they all have slightly different stories. So I think my question to you is, what do you think about the type of medical treatment you received as a child? Okay, so... The types of medical treatment that I was given, when I, it was critical treatment. I had to explain that to me when I was about three years old. I spent a year in hospital, and I was trying to, and I was, and it was a tiring experience, very, very tiring. Through the years, I, well, through that year, I had to rest and recover. I would get up for a study group and other healthy activities. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. Knowing what you know now, um, do you feel that the doctors that were treating you as a child knew what they were doing? Well, that's a, I like that question that you asked because through the years when I have been going to the ER emergency room, the doctors have had a very particular part in my life because the doctors have to know what they're doing you know, to treat a sickle cell patient. Right treat any patient really but sickle cell in, in general because sickle cell is is, is very critical mm -hmm. and you know through that time a doctor need in, in a sickle cell patient a sickle cell patient needs that support from the doctor mm -hmm. so my experience was really great I mean it, it was it was beneficial you know they helped me and when we get on to the next questions you'll re you'll realize that and for sickle cell, you need professionals. Yeah, for sure. Yes, People sir. need to know what they're doing. Yes, sir. And, and that's a big, big, uh, big issue for us. We talk about it a lot. Um, so what about your schooling? Um, did you have a hard time getting through school because of sickle cell? And if so, explain why. And, and if not, please explain why not. Did you have a hard time? When I was younger, getting through school was challenging. When I was younger, I went through some ups and downs. I remember being, I remember being the top students in my science class. I was the most intelligent when I was in high school. I was the first person to achieve a plus in biology. I was the first person to get out of my biology class, receiving an A plus. <laughs> through my high school years, the only help that I needed was the one-on-one. -on -one. If I had a personal tutor, I would do just fine. Okay. Um, and that's always a big thing for us as well because, you know, it's very difficult, uh, particularly for those that have sickle cell, um, that are more, the more intense varieties of sickle cell, um, for people to be able to get through school. And, and so we just like to talk about that so that people can understand that it is possible um, to get through school. Um, yes, sir. So, um, you're still working on your education as I understand it, right? Yes, sir, I am. Okay. Um, and we'll come back to that in a minute. You know, on one of our earlier shows, we talked about transitioning to adult care, um, which is really a process that has been uh, picking up a lot of interest and a lot of concern, um, where when you're a youngster, a child with sickle cell, um, you, you're pretty much treated like a king or queen, um, but as you get older, that changes, um, and particularly as you hit adulthood, it's a totally different picture. 
Um, and that's something that we're trying to work on is to try to smooth that transition from adult, I mean, from pediatric to adult care. So did you have any transition plan um, that you worked with as you came through your uh, your childhood, your teenage years into adulthood? Yes. Transitioning for me was very easily. I learned how to positively transition myself from a child to a young adult. I placed myself in the hands of professionals, such as professional doctors, as well as phys- physicians for sickle cell, mental, and physical. Okay. So you had a team of people that you were working with to help with that? Yes. And that's the way it's supposed to be. Yes. So, so that's good. Yes, sir. Through, through my years, when I was younger, I have always had a, had a team working under me, you know, working for me as well mm-hmm. for the sickle cell. The physician is very helpful because a physician coaches you mm-hmm. for the sickle cell, a mental physician and a physical physician. Mm-hmm. Pretty soon, I will have a, a different pass on my medical benefits mm-hmm. from my physical and my mental physicians as well as just my hospital, my hemoglobin doctor. From the right, sickle cell. right, right. And the hemoglobin doctor is the one that is... They, he, he tells you about the blood cell count and what's going on with your sickle cell. Mm-hmm. So where, where, are your, where is your hematologist located here in Indianapolis? Who do you, well, you don't say their name, but where, where are they located? <laughs> well, they're located on the northeast side of town in the Castleton District, or in the Warrens District. Okay, sir. okay, all right. Um, so I think one of the things that's important is, and, and hopefully you realize this, but Beyond the transition plan, um, we encourage all sickle cell patients to ensure that they have uh, a team approach. So you've touched on that, and I want to go into that just a little bit deeper. Uh, The importance of recognizing that the best way to take care of yourself if you have sickle cell is to ensure that you see not only the hematologist, but that you see, for instance, an ophthalmologist, someone that is able to help you with your eyes because a sickle cell can affect your vision, right? Um, you need a pulmonologist because sickle cell has big impacts on your lungs. You need um, a rheumatologist because sickle cell has other um, impacts on your immune system, things like that. Um, and so would you agree that that's the best way to go? I would definitely agree. Throughout the time period when you're younger and throughout the time period when you are coming a young adult or just an adult, you want to make sure that everything is taken care of regarding your health. Right. And with sickle cell, it comes a lot of effects and effects. Effects meaning that you can get affected if you're not careful. So mm-hmm. being careful and planning is the right thing to do mm-hmm. and planning to have the planning to have those doctors on your side is really good. Now, and that's the effective part, right? Mm-hmm. There. Uh, mm-hmm. That would be more effective if you had those doctors on your side because they know about sickle cell, and that's why I have my prescription glasses on today. Sometimes, with sickle cell disease, your eyes can't, your eyesight can be right, affected. right, it can be. Um, so that's something for people that are listening that maybe aren't paying attention to those kinds of things you know when you're a kid and you're in a children's hospital where many children with sickle cell end up um, they will give you all of those people they will put them on your case automatically Um, you know so if you're having uh, if you're a five-year-old and you're at a hospital for children and you're having a sickle cell crisis before you leave that place, you probably will see a number of different specialties, uh, doctors that have different specialties to ensure that everything is going okay with you. When you're no longer a kid and you are pretty much totally responsible for your own health care um, and you don't have your parents and the doctors have hovering over you like they do in the children's hospital, you are probably not as likely to have a whole team of doctors working with you. And that is what we are telling people. You need to rethink that um, in order to try to ensure that you are managing your sickle cell condition to the best of your ability. So um, thank you for bringing up the team approach because I think that's something that we just can't stress enough. And we see plenty of evidence that people with sickle cell um, are not 
using the team approach. So you're that's welcome, that's sir. really big. Yes, um, so let's go back to the fact that you said you're still working on your education. You mind telling us what you're studying and and when you hope to be finished? Yes. So I am studying criminal justice and law. I am taking the steps to accomplish this goal by reading political books and studying on a daily basis. Okay. Okay. So what do you want to do with that? Well, do you I want to be a lawyer? Or do you is that what you're trying to do? Or? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. What I am trying to do with this is I am trying to be a lawyer and as well as a floor house representative okay. or a spokesman for sickle cell disease. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so you mentioned criminal justice. I'm just curious. As a young African American man studying criminal justice, what are some of your thoughts about what's happening in our streets these days? You know, with all of the uh, kill killings of of people by police and and people killing police, and it seems like justice is out of hand in many ways. What are some of your thoughts about that? As a Cherokee Native American male studying criminal justice, my thoughts for what's happening in the economy is a large portion of young male and women that are getting involved in unnecessary action. Bringing professionals that are stable in the field of government in today's economy to label them as incapable and non-functioned human beings. The world right now is in debt on a global basis for this statement to be made. To be made, the government is trying to make the world a better place as well as a more functional place. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Mr. Standard, uh, we're going to take a break, and then when we come back, we'll continue our discussion. Um, this is the Sickle Cell Action Network Internet Radio Show, and I am Gary A. Gibson, your host. Welcome back to the Sickle Cell Action Network. The Sickle Cell Action Network show is sponsored by Mass Therapeutics, a publicly traded by pharmaceutical company headquartered in San Diego, California. MAST is currently leveraging the molecular adhesion and sealant technology platform derived from over two decades of clinical, non-clinical, and manufacturing experience with purified and non-purified palaxomers. MAST has developed a drug called MST-188 as a candidate for serious or life-threatening diseases with significant unmet needs. Among those needs is the treatment of sickle cell disease. MAST has enrolled sickle cell patients in a clinical trial known as EPIC. EPIC stands for Evaluation of Purified Palaxomer in Crisis. If successful, EPIC could result in the first treatment of its kind to treat sickle cell disease patients while they are in crisis. The EPIC study aims to determine whether MST-188 can shorten the duration of a painful crisis. MST-188 is an investigational drug that has not been approved for commercial cell in any jurisdiction for any use. MST-188 potentially improves oxygen delivery and it may help keep blood vessels from becoming blocked and more obstructed. It may improve blood flow by stopping cells from grouping together. It also may reduce inflammation and it may restore cell membranes and give damaged cells time to heal. EPIC participants continue to receive their normal pain treatments during crisis and their participation in the trial is free of charge to them. The patients involved in the EPIC study may not only be helping themselves, but they might also be helping future generations of those yet to be born. If you are interested in learning more about the EPIC study, please visit www.theepicstudy.com. Thank you to Mass Therapeutics for the continued support and sponsorship of the Sickle Cell Action Network Internet Radio Show which is today uh, about the fight to excel and we're speaking with a outstanding young man um, who just so happens to have sickle cell beta thalassemia and who is enlightening us with his approach to life um, he's already given us some very good <coughs> thoughts to to focus on <coughs> including a team approach to medical care and the management of his condition uh, to the point where he has been able to actively engage in um, actually strenuous sports. So I'm speaking of Mr. Samuel Denzel Standard, um, and we are going to continue our discussion with him. And my next question to you, Samuel, is what have been your greatest challenges when it comes to you getting your education? 
getting my education in the greatest challenges well my greatest challenges are staying out of trouble and staying away from the non-educated crowd I do this by staying positive and involved in my studies you stay deeply involved in your studies yes sir and that's great advice for almost anyone that's trying to uh, get their education stay involved in your studies um, so are you currently working and if so what do you do okay well I do have a agency and a corporation I, just last month I did sign my business license and I did get approved by Indianapolis and it's called the SIL the Samuel Denzel standards the great seal of America of the United States of America. the great seal of the United States of America sorry about that and it is a the seal is a bureaucratic business organization that's structured by carry out specific functions and what it does is govern, govern, governing the extended enterprises requires a new way of thinking about government relations with me simply supplying a political blog written and published by myself, Samuel Denzel Standard. You can read it and you can read some of the blogs on Google Plus at Samuel Denzel Standards, the seal.com or at gmail.com. Once again, it is on Gmail, Google Plus. As and I am the author. The majority of high-profile pro collaborative blogs are based around single, uniting theme around as pol politics or healthy foods for sickle cell disease. And the SDS the SEAL, Samuel Denzel Standard SEAL, also governs jury duty, lobbying, and jury summons is a court order. It means you have to attend at the time and place stated unless you have been execute, excused as a junior juror you do have to show up serving on jury and our society is both privilege and legal duty to serve service as juror the third thing the SD, SDS sickle, or SDS Samuel Denzel standards seal governs is criminal justice for certified recovery specialist house representative spokesman for sickle cell anemia disease abbreviation SD economic development and national and divine success international luxury club abbreviation DS international foreign affairs for general government divine success international luxury club or Samuel Denzel Standard Sickle Cell Cadiz Health Co Care Coverage Agency will grant sickle cell assistance such as sponsors clothing, shirts for business wear called the 100 Polo Wear for people with sickle cell disease. The second thing that the Divine Success sponsors is healthy cooking for sickle cell disease, teaching our younger generation how to eat healthier foods and managing sickle cell disease. The third thing that Divine Success sponsors is a Board of Education Services, AWIE, Educational Books Publishing Agencies for Modern Educational Books. I write the book books myself as a motivational young up-and-coming congressman. And I do have a book that is getting ready to come out. It's due either next year on December, just on Christmas, and it's called The Renaissance Man. We'll talk about all of that in a minute, your books, but let's go back because you just threw out a whole lot of stuff. Yes, sir. And I'm going to be honest and say I'm a little confused. How are you able to do all of those different things, some of which don't even seem to be related to another? Well, I did relate them in a way. Everything it, for me is in government, and it just depends on what type of what type of the organizations or functions um, being specific which ones which ones are you would you like to hear about um, well so you so first of all you've got seal or s the, the DS seal. seal the seal yes sir so that's one and that's one enterprise mm -hmm. right and then you've got a w what was it a w i e a w i e yes. is that a separate and second and separate enterprise well it is sponsored by the seal the AWIE is for is for publishing and it's for me as an author so I can publish my books. I'm an author and, and I do write and I do have so far about four books written. 
Okay. So, and then uh, what was the other one? DS? It was DS. It was Divine Success International Luxury of D- Club. Divine Success? Yes, Divine Success International Luxury Club, or Samuel Denzel Standard. The abbreviation for that is DS or District S. And what this does is it gives sponsors for healthy cooking, um, educational books, as well as donations of for sickle cell or clothing. Okay, are those three separate? No, no, Divine, Su- Divine Success, DS, and then the and then the seal and then AWIE they're all published they're all sponsored not published excuse me they're all sponsored by the same company the seal the seal yes, so sir. the seal is the the parent company if yes. you will yes, and sir. then the others are umbrellaed under yes, the sir. seal okay Organi- basically organizations and they function under the seal okay so and the seal is your baby yes sir okay um, now, you, you mentioned something about um, government, and apparently you're, you're studying criminal justice, and several times you've made comments about government. Apparently you're very interested in government. Where, where, where does that interest come from? Well, Student Government Association and the bureaucratic executive for KYSU and seven and seven district senator Andre Carson is a relative of mine. Re- representative Andre Carson. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Yes, sir. He said senator, but he's a rep. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, right now he would be considered a rep because he is running for senator. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So, bureaucratic. Well, as a bureaucratic, as a leader, there I stand for federalism theories of or, origins and purpose of government and other aspects of the American government, including interest groups political parties and the electoral process emphasizes is placed on a constitutional backgrounds and organizations and functions of the executive legislative the judicial segment of the national government civil liberties and civil rights public opinion media and bureaucracies and domestic and foreign policies and the companies that have that I have just explained to you are public opinion because it's media it's one of them is the blog the the seal blog and it talks about public media about the bureaucracies and about democratics and about the government system how that operates and what's going on in the government mm-hmm. system mm-hmm. and then you can observe it through through Google plus mm-hmm. I'm getting ready to start making IDs and badges because I do want a certain amount of people to go on there and to read them right now I do have about 9,000 followers and 9,000 wow. readers okay. yes sir it's, it's a lot and okay. I, the company I mean I, I have been working on the company since about 2009 okay and then for the domestic and foreign policies would be divine success divine success since I am Cherokee native and I, I do represent Africa as well as uh, Greece I'm really strong and really really participate in, in a lot of Greek functions uh, throughout the divine success uh, and I do have Greek relative and inheritance and ancestors since that's where the sickle cell um, came from and that's where sickle cell gene was found that is very that is a domestic and foreign uh, public relation for the seal and that just gives you information about what's going on uh, what and what happened through the times when sickle cell was derived through that country and, and through the, the Middle Eastern uh, seas yeah that, that's a good point uh, Samuel that um, mo- many people probably don't realize that uh, scientists believe that sickle cell actually rose um, in four distinct areas of the globe Um, and the area that you're referring to the Mediterranean is one of those areas Um, India is one of those areas Um, Africa is one of those areas and Central America is one of those areas if I'm not mistaken that's the fourth one you're you're right but at any rate um, so those people uh, many people don't realize that that's one of the main reasons why we have so many varieties or variations of sickle cell disease so why we have sickle cell SS or sickle cell SC or sickle cell beta thalassemia uh, plus minus sickle cell E sickle cell D on and on and on and a lot of it has to do with the fact that we had these four separate areas where sickle cell evolved or or, gener- or originated and then we have mixing and intermingling of people that starts to change all of those genetics around so it's it's really fascinating and i'm 
I'm relatively um, glad that you brought that up. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of your other work experiences. So have you had any other jobs besides those that you're working on as your own boss? Well, yes, I have. I have had a job here, well, last year, and it was based off of school. And what happened was I had went down to the Virgin Islands, and I was doing an international affairs for my company. It wasn't, I mean, it's, it's still related to the SIL since this is a foreign policy. And what happened was with that, I had did a student government association and then I, I, I did a tour of the school I was the one of the class heads of the school doing the tours and leading everybody around the Virgin Islands so a video is coming up for me shortly and it will be posted at least after November okay did you like the Virgin Islands yes yeah. I mean it's it's very peaceful very tropical because yeah it is the West beautiful. It's and, beautiful and it's very beautiful yes yeah. sir um, okay, so we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll continue our discussion with Mr. Samuel Denzel Standard. This is the Sickle Cell Action Network, and I am Gary A. Gibson, your host. You? Welcome back to the Sickle Cell Action Network. I'm Gary A. Gibson, your host. Um, the Sickle Cell Action Network is brought to you as a service of Martin Center Sickle Cell Initiative, a community-based organization located in Indianapolis, Indiana. We uh, were founded in 1969, and we have been providing services to people with sickle cell disease since 1970. Um, among the services that we currently provide are a food pantry, a support group, transportation assistance, emergency financial assistance, um, and general counseling and referrals. Um, and these are things that are in growing demand based on the fact that we are uh, encountering newer uh, number, uh, a larger number of, of new patients with sickle cell disease that are in need of these services. In addition to the services that we provide, we also provide education to our community. We participate in health fairs um, all around the central Indiana area, and we may participate in as many as 30 or more health fairs every year. We also provide group presentations. We give uh, uh, presentations to schools schools um, and, um, and corporations. We also do advocacy. We work with the Indiana Legislature, the Indiana State Department of Health, the Marion County uh, Public Department of Health, etc. All of those entities we approach and try to ensure that they understand that sickle cell disease is an important public health issue and that more assistance from them is needed to make an impact. So that's what we are at Martin Center Sickle Cell Initiative and we're very pleased to have the opportunity to speak with you uh, here on the Sickle Cell Action Network Internet Radio Show. Today we are speaking with Mr. Samuel Denzel Standard um, and he has been giving us a lot of information about the impact of sickle cell disease in his life and how he has been working to manage it but not only manage it but conquer it and excel and that's what we're talking about today so we're going to pick up uh, where we left off and and you know Samuel at Martin Center Sickle Cell Initiative we're working on an important new project that we call the Emergency Department Sickle Cell Education Project. And we're doing this because we got tired of hearing about the lack of knowledge and, and cultural sensitivity or insensitivity of the Emergency Department staff. How often do you have to go to the ER? <coughs> well, how often do I have to go to the ER? ER visits are on, ER visits only happen when I'm in critical pain. My ER visits are well, the are are well. The nurse and the doctors know how to definitely handle patients with sickle cell. Okay, so where you go, that's true. Um, where other people go, that's not so true, and that's the reason why we have this project to ensure that. Um, people have a, uh, not to uh, pick on your name, but a standard approach to uh, treating people with sickle cell, and that does not seem to be true. Um, and that's, that's part of what we're attempting to correct with our sickle cell uh, project, our education project. Um, so you think that the experiences that you get, that you have in the ER are okay then, in other words? Yes, sir, I do. Okay. Um, I'm going to switch gears and say one of the least talked about impacts of sickle cell 
is the financial burden that usually comes with it. Um, and I've spoken to many patients who have thousands of dollars of medical debt. Is that true for you? Um, and if so, how do you manage that? How do I manage that? And is this a financial burden? So it's not a financial burden if you are managing your money correctly uh -huh. and well. Uh -huh. Okay. Now you have, um, do you have, you have insurance then? Yes, I do. I do. I am on the Indiana Healthy Plus insurance. And okay. Insurance. Okay. Okay. And that helps a lot. That really helps a lot. Yeah, that helps I a lot. I know the co-payments are, you, can, you don't have to pay for any co-payments for mm -hmm. the medicine and the medication that you are receiving. Uh -huh. So far as the doctor's visits, sometimes you can... You do have co-pays for the you doctor's do, visits. You do have co-pays for the doctor's visits. And that's where a lot of it adds up for a lot of patients yes, that is. have, because lots of visits to the doctors, lots of visits to the hospitals, yes. and that's where the hit comes is from the co-pays for those that have some sort of insurance, right? Yes, sir. Um, okay, so um, another direction, another issue that sickle cell patients face is in finding companionship. Has How has your life unfolded with, with that? Well, companionship comes from compassion, comes from perseverance within the self to learn how to achieve compassion and companionship. You have to love yourself for who you are. If you're not going to function with your own thoughts, dreams, and goals and aspirations, then finding companion, finding companion in yourself and compassion, is not going to, it's not going to be hard. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now I'm gonna switch gears again. Didn't you tell me that you're also writing a book or maybe more than one book? Yes, I did. Okay, tell us about that. What, what's 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 your book about? Okay, so the agency is A W I E, and it's called Educational Books A W I E for Educational Books Publishing Agency for Modern Educational Books. I write the books myself as a motivational young and up and coming congressman. My first book. You is, say you're an up and coming congressman. You want to be a congressman? Yes. Sir. Okay. Yes, th that was the whole purpose <clears throat> of the law degree that I'm getting ready to receive. Okay. Criminal justice okay. background. We need a congressman in Congress that has something, some concern about sickle cell disease. Definitely, yes. yes. House oh. representative for sickle cell anemia. Uh -huh. Okay. And my, okay, so my first book is a fictional book called The Renaissance Man. Okay. It's about a young entrepreneurial lawyer that has a family that is progressing from his wealthy inheritance, being a lawyer and having a rugby team that was passed down to him <clears throat> at a young age from his grandfather who lived in the old country, Britain, Greece, in the 1930s from the World War One. Okay, so that's book number one. That's book number one. You're also working on something else. Yes, sir. Uh, tell us about that. Okay, so the other one is an up-and-coming book. It's called The Brooklyn Slugger. And The Brooklyn Slugger is about, about a young... About a young boxer and the boxer is going through a triumph because he is the best and he is settling down with his last fight and at this time he is training hard and we don't know if the fight's gonna end well or end good okay anything else yes i do have a political book that is getting ready to come out it's a political comic book and this one is a little bit for the younger generation I know every time... A political so, comic book? Yes, a okay. political comic book. And his name is Baby Sam. And what he does is talk about everything that's going on and happening. From Congress to just things in general. If you remember the cartoon show in the 1980s, Dennis the Menace, mm -hmm. that, I mean, it has kind of like a sequel to from it. Okay. And here I'm getting ready to show you what he looks like. I think it's kind of funny because a lot of people will tell you that politics today is comical. Comical, right? So, okay. Yes, it, it is very comical, and they do usually come out with political comics, but they're just short comics, and they're really, really crude to the young generation around us. Okay, interesting photograph. I wish you all could see this. Yes, sir. Um, okay, so that's good stuff. I'm glad to see that you're writing. It gives you an opportunity to express yourself and share yourself with the rest of the world. Um, 
I think it's amazing, uh, Samuel, that so many people still know so little but about sickle cell. Um, do you think the same thing? Yes, I, I do think the same thing. I would tell my, I, I mean, I, I would tell the officials that living with sickle cell disease is very, very thoughtful, and you have to be responsible and know how to handle sickle cell anemia well to live a happy and productive life. Okay. Um, what would you tell them they, for instance, let's say that <coughs> you had the chance to speak to uh, our current presidential candidates. Uh, what would you tell them? I mean, what would you tell them that sickle cell needs? It needs a responsible and it needs a person that knows how to handle sickle cell anemia and a person that has lived through it and a person that is happy with being and having the productive life of okay. from sickle cell. Okay. Um, and so you talk about wanting to be a congressman and, and wanting to be able to use that um, to be able to help with sickle cell. Are you familiar right now with any current sickle cell legislation that Congress might have in front of it? Yes, one of them is, like you said, well, I don't know if you consider yourself a congressman, Mr. Gates. No, I'm not. But you I mean, but you have made it clear that you are really helping out with sickle cell anemia and that you are a beneficial part you know, of sickle cell because this is one of the only sponsors on air yeah, on live. This is true. And when you were telling me that, I was... I was just getting my thoughts, and I, I said that this is really, really, really great for the community with the sickle cell people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the people that have sickle cell, mm -hmm. and yes, I do. There are House representatives and mm -hmm. House um, sickle cell appreciation programs that they do, that mm -hmm. they have for government, mm -hmm. uh, for si to govern sickle mm -hmm. cell anemia and to help out with that. Let me suggest that you take a look at... Um uh, see if you can gather some information on Representative Danny Davis. Danny Davis. Danny Davis is a congressman from Chicago and currently appears to me to be the leader um, within Congress of, of people that are concerned about sickle cell. Okay. So he has filed several pieces of legislation um, about sickle cell, wanting to get more support for people with sickle cell and for sickle cell programs like those that we run at Martin Center. Um, and so I think it's just, uh, it would be, be interesting for you to, to look him up and, and see some of the legislation that he's tried to get passed in Congress. Um, and it's struggling. His efforts are, are it's an uphill climb. Uh, but he has determination and he continues to put in new bills um, every time there's a session uh, of Congress. And he puts in new bills that just kind of don't go anywhere but he keeps trying and, and we give him a lot of credit because he keeps trying so look him up and 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 you maybe maybe can learn something from him and could you repeat his name please danny davis d-a-n-n-y d-a-v-i-s from yes. chicago yes sir um so let's talk now about our theme fighting to excel or the fight to excel and as we do that i'm going to start by just saying that i believe that basically for each of us getting through each day is a minor triumph and I think that for sickle cell patients getting through each day is actually a major victory what is it about you that makes you able to achieve victories day after day what is it about you that drives you to be this man that we see sitting here with these hopes these dreams these projects and all the things you're doing what is it okay well what makes my day on a daily basis is getting up to enjoy life. Life is like the ancients you should treasure. Say that again? <laughs> what makes my day on a daily basis is getting up to enjoy life. Okay. Life is like the ancients you should treasure. Okay. So getting up every day to enjoy life is what motivates you. Yes. You get up every day so that you can enjoy life, so that you can take the opportunity given you to enjoy life. Yes, sir. Very, very cool. Very cool. Uh, you seem to have a lot of different things going on in your life, and you seem to have set goals for yourself. Um, so please tell us a little bit how you stay true to the goals that you set. 
my true goal is receiving my criminal justice degree okay. and being the best father in the world to my two-year-old daughter okay. and getting more into the professional side of Congress. Okay. So what is it that you do to, to get there? Well, like I said, I, I study on a daily basis. And usually I would blog about everything that is happening that is going on into the political world and the government world. And then going to jury duty and sitting in the juror as a lobbyer. And a lobbyer is somebody that that is seeking influence for a political or a public person. And or somebody that works as an agent or somebody that works for government services or agencies which I have myself um, in studying and going to school getting my credits uh, probably getting ready to tr probably getting ready to study as soon as I get home <laughs> with the with my political science book and just enjoying life as, as well as becoming a father uh, teaching myself what to do as a father, you know, the steps to take is becoming a better father. Okay. Um, so are you watching the conventions? The Are you watching the Republican, Republican convention right now and the Democratic convention next week? Yes, sir, I am. Okay. Do you find that a fascinating process? I do. I find that a very interesting process, and I find that a very interesting process towards the point that I'll, I have where where it's to the point where I can just grasp it and I can know what's going on in this situation because the government is of electives and, f and government officials that are doing everything and they're broke up and, and split up into executive branches. Mm -hmm. So these have certain outcomes that affect situations, certain situations in the government or in the economy, not even just the government, in the economy. Mm -hmm. Well, they affect pretty much every aspect of life, yes, to sir. be honest with you. So yes. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's critically important for people. And I think you'll probably agree with me based on where you've been coming from here today. But that's why it's important for people to be active politically. And by active politically, I don't necessarily mean that you have to get out and protest, but you do have to get out and vote. Would you agree with that? Yes, you I do to agree. Get out and vote. Yes, sir. Um, because if you don't, then you can't blame anybody else for what happened when you didn't and that's something that we think is important and you know honestly um, people that face difficult challenges like a sickle cell disease or any other chronic kind of condition um, it may be a little harder to to actually get up and go vote or to pay attention or interest but there's reasons why you should and on a, one of those reasons of course I was just mentioning earlier that Representative Danny Davis from Chicago has continued to put legislation into the into the uh, Congress to try to raise more money for sickle cell, and uh, so therefore, um, what we want to see is that people support that, because if people don't support it, it won't happen, and the way for people to support it is to vote for the people that are likely to support it. Um, and that's really important. So it's 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 definitely important to try to pay attention to what's happening politically and to get involved and express yourself by voting for the candidate that you think will do the best job for you. Um, Samuel, do you have any heroes or people that you look up to to help you maintain your determination and strength? Yes, I do. And who are they? The first person would be... First in person would definitely be the ancients in, in, in during this time period of 100 through 1000 BC or after the, after the AD, the death of Christ. It, it would have to be those people and those characters. And especially the ones, the strong, powerful ones that have served as the government, such as one of them, the Moclises. And he is a government official and he was a government speaker and a general. He was a Greek. Yes. Yeah. He was a Greek. Yeah. And I don't think that the people that know about that time period, half of those armies they had sickle cell. True. And yes. True. And in my opinion and in my facts that I have been gathering from and that I have been seeing and stating and doing research is some of the generals that we know today, such as him 
had the sickle cell mm -hmm. the trait or the disease mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. So that's really who I look up to because they have kept pushing and and he was based in Athens and Athens is of course one of the strongest not even dictators or republics during city that states. Time. City states. Right. And during that time period they were pushing so it wouldn't be a republic anymore. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be any heavy dictators coming mm -hmm. down here and destroying things. Mm -hmm. And with that nature, I mean, I think that I look up to them because of their their mental aspects and definitely their 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 physical appearance and their mental awareness. It's what's what's interesting about some of them, uh, some of those people that you're referring to, is that they are the ones that helped um, design or give the idea of what democracy should look like. Yes, sir. Democracy instead of a republic. Yeah. And that, that is very, democracy should be liberal, and democracy can either be based as a democratic point or it can be based as a conservative. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. So you look up to people that believe in democracy. I yes, like sir. that a lot. Um, what about faith? Um, does that play any role in helping you to continue your battle and achieve your victories? Yes, it does. I'm very spiritual and I'm very in tune with the Lord myself, especially the, in, uh, I mean, I'm very in tune with the Lord and I am very spiritual right now. I am a, a Catholic and I, I do present Catholicism very heavily. Okay. Yes, okay. Um, and now I'm going to switch here and say, from what I understand of you, you like to mentor young kids with sickle cell. Yes, sir. Um, so what what do you tell them to keep them motivated to grow up and be strong sickle cell warriors like you? Okay. Well, what I would like to tell them and what I would like to teach them is about, one, I mean, one of the companies that I have, Divine Success, the International Luxury Club, and it's... And it represents sickle cell anemia, and it's the the branch of the Cadis Healthcare Coverage Company that I'm really trying to sponsor and get together. And it's going to be sponsoring clothing and shirts for the 100 for the 100 polo wear for people with sickle cell disease. And then the other thing is going to be the healthy cooking. I would like to start. I would like to to cook and give give them healthy foods especially a, a healthy cookbook as well as give them a, educational books that I published from my AWE the educational books for ancient and for for modern for modern educational books so I would tell them to stay in tune with yourself and what I mean stay in tune with yourself I mean learn something from yourself and learn some good aspects about yourself so you can do good in the future and not you know or not receive anything bad or not do any mischief or anything bad. You mm -hmm. can do what's good and positive and accomplish good and great things. Sounds good. Sounds good. So if Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft and now a uh, worldwide uh, philanthropist came along and gave you a million dollars and he told you that you could only use it on sickle cell, what? would you do with it i would well i would keep pushing for my I would, I would keep on going to school for my definitely my criminal justice background and no and, not not for you what oh, would for sickle cell in general for the well, sickle well, cell for, for sickle cell community i would i would donate i would start a well i would really help them out with donating funds and definitely donating some clothing and and healthy cooking okay and, and, and books for the sickle cell use. okay so that's why I was saying just in, in general oh okay the, the okay. okay so you really really believe in the healthy cooking and the healthy eating yes I you do. really really yes, do. I do okay yes, sir. Um, Samuel you you have uh, been gracious with us today and and sharing yourself as you have um, is there anything else that we haven't covered that you would like to add today no sir Nothing at all? Nothing. So. Okay. nothing. Well, really nothing. I just want to say thank you for, for you know, having me. And okay. Thank you for hosting the show today. And okay. I hope if anybody's listening and if you're a sickle cell patient or if you're a person with sickle cell, that I will, will be sponsoring 
uh, for sickle cell pretty soon. Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that has been uh, Mr. Samuel Denzel Standard. Does Denzel have anything to do with Denzel Washington? Does your name come from that? <laughs> no, sir. It, okay. It, well, kind of. Kind. I guess they, they looked up to him when I was younger, so they, they made him. And, and plus, my father is in entertainment. So. Oh, your father's in entertainment. Yes. Okay. Well, you're a handsome guy like Mr. Denzel, so uh, maybe that's why they did it, too. Um, yes, sir. Again, I'd like to remind everyone that uh, the Sickle Cell Warriors uh, Family Gathering and Educational Symposium in Los Angeles is um, next week, um, the 28th through the 31st of July, um, actually in Hollywood, California at the Lowe's um, Hollywood Hotel and uh, really looking forward to meeting a bunch of people um, who are coming from everywhere to be there. Uh, the Sickle Cell Warriors community is 18,000 members strong um, and I don't think all 18,000 will be there but it sounds like it's going to be a pretty large crowd. Um, but again, I'm looking forward to having the opportunity to be there and to share some of my thoughts about Sickle Cell. And um, I, I just can't wait to get out there and, and start hanging out with, uh, with all of the people from the Sickle Cell Warriors community. It's time to close our show. Um, as always, I close with the thought to leave you with. Um, today's thought, trying to keep in theme with today's uh, theme, which is... Uh, the fight for excellence and so my closing quote actually comes from uh, Mr. Pat Riley. Um, Pat Riley is the American professional basketball ex executive and a former coach and player in the National Basketball Association. He's been the team president of the Miami Heat since 1995 and he's widely regarded as one of the greatest NBA coaches of all time uh, because he served as the head coach of five, five championship teams. Uh, Pat Riley said, Excellence is the gradual result of always striving to do better. Excellence is the gradual result of always striving to do better. So what do you think of when you hear the word excellence? I imagine that it could probably be anything because excellence and excellent are words that we hear used quite often in a wide variety of ways. We say that a movie was excellent. We say that an event that we attended was excellent. We say the same thing about a speech that we might have heard or a photograph that we saw online. We even say that the food served at a family meal was excellent. We push our children toward excellence because we want the best for them in their future. Then our teachers try to prepare us for excellence from the first moment we step into a school all the way up until the time that we graduate. Then our bosses push us to reach for excellence in their attempt to reach higher profits for their organization. Sometimes it even seems that the words excellent and effort are almost interchangeable. Well, that's true, because they are. It is said that achieving perfection is impossible, and I agree with that. However, achieving excellence is certainly within everyone's reach. It is merely a matter of effort. Effort is work, and work is what creates an end product. An artist must work on her painting in order to finish it, display it, and sell it. An actor must work to learn his lines before he can step on the stage or in front of the camera without making a fool of himself. An Olympic sprinter must work on her muscles, her stamina, and her technique long before she even plants her feet into the starting blocks on the world stage in Rio. It is only after this work is done that we can say, that is an excellent painting or that was an excellent play, or that was an excellent race. Those who live with sickle cell know that it takes a great deal of effort for them to have any semblance of a normal life. They know that they sometimes have to be at, light, at least twice as hopeful and twice as determined to reach some of the goals that many others take for granted. But not only do they know these things, they do them too. They put in that extra effort day in and day out, and they are better off for doing so. That is just one of the many reasons that I have so much respect for those we call sickle cell warriors. 
I very rarely hear sickle cell warriors complain about having to put in the extra effort. Sure, they might talk about what they had to go through in order to do something or get somewhere, but they hardly ever complain about it. I think that sets a tremendous example for other people who don't have something like sickle cell hanging over them, but still find ways to complain about every little obstacle that gets in their way. People like that could never be warriors, now could they? This brings me back to excellence. It is in the continual effort, the continual pursuit that is made by sickle cell warriors to live as much of a normal life as possible that I see excellence. If you have sickle cell disease, I encourage you to think about that for a moment. Your work, your efforts, and your fight sit you above many who will never achieve the same level of excellence that you do. Keep striving, and I promise you, your excellence will show even more. That's our show for today. Please join us again next week. Same time, same station.